Good day, grade 8 learners! In this video lesson, we're going to discuss about periodic table of elements. With the most essential learning competency, use the periodic table to predict the chemical behavior of an element. We have the following specific objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to first Determine the location by group and period of the element in the modern periodic table. Second, you have to predict the metallic and non-metallic characteristics of elements in the periodic table. And last, you have to illustrate or show ways to prevent corrosion of metals. But before we proceed, let's have first a recall of what we have discussed in the previous video lesson. In the previous video lesson, you have learned that atoms are composed of subatomic particles, protons, electrons, and neutrons. Atoms have nuclei that contain protons and neutrons. And electrons move in the space around the nucleus. An element may be known by its atomic number or the number of protons and the mass number represents the number of protons and neutrons of an atom and atoms of the same element that differ in mass numbers are known as isotopes you may start answering activity number one entitled unlocking jumbled terms you simply have to rearrange the letters in each item to identify the term being defined by the statement have to write the term in the space provided. As we all know, periodic table of element contains the arrangement of all the elements. But first, let's try to define what is an element. Element is a pure substance that is made from a single type of atom. Elements are the building blocks for all the rest of the matter in the world. Examples of elements include hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, iron, gold, helium, and others. As of today, we have a total of 118 elements discovered. Now, the essential question would be, how are the elements arranged in the periodic table of elements? Here are some facts about elements. The earliest known elements were classified into two groups only. And they are classified as metals or non-metals. Now, how are these elements classified as metals or non-metals? They are classified based on the characteristic, the physical and chemical properties. Here's a table summarizing the comparison between metals and non-metals. As a material, metals are strong while non-metals are brittle. Metals are malleable and ductile, while non-metals are brittle. Metals react with oxygen to form basic oxides, while non-metals react with oxygen to form acidic oxides. Non-metals have dull sound when heat with hammer. Metals have high melting and boiling point, while non-metals have low melting and boiling point. In terms of conductivity, metals are good conductors of electricity and heat, while non-metals are poor conductors of electricity and heat. With regards to the state of matter, metals are mainly solids at room temperature, except mercury which is liquid at room temperature, while non-metal exists as solids, liquids, and gases at room temperature. Metals are shiny when polished, while non-metals are dull looking. And when metals forms ions, the ions are positive, while non-metals forms ions that are negative, except hydrogen that forms a positive ion. In terms of density, metals usually have high density, while non-metals has low density. However, this system of classification was too broad to be useful. Scientists have always searched for patterns, regularities, and symmetries in nature. They believe that if a pattern can be discovered, information and data can be arranged and organized in ways that will make it more understandable, meaningful, and useful. 
An excellent example of this is the periodic table. So let's talk about the development of the periodic table. There are several scientists who tried to arrange elements in various ways. And the first was Johann Wolfgang Doberaner, which is known with his Doberaner triads. He classified the elements with similar properties into groups of three called triads. In each triad, he noticed that the atomic mass and the density of the intermediate element is approximately the average of the atomic masses and densities of the other two elements. However, as new elements were discovered, it no longer followed these groups of three. Next to Johann Wolfgang Doberaner is John Newlands, which is known with his Law of Octaves. He arranged the elements according to increasing atomic masses. And he noted that properties recur after every eight element. And since he had musical training, he compared this periodic repetition of properties to octaves and called it the law of octaves. However, John Newland's law of octaves has some irregularities. The problem is that after calcium, the pattern starts to break down. And although Newland had the right idea, some of the elements hadn't been discovered yet. Next to Newland's is Dimitri Mendeleev which is known with his Mendeleev's Periodic Table. He arranged the elements in vertical columns also in order of increasing atomic masses. And he noticed a regular or periodic recurrence of their physical and chemical properties, also known as the periodic law. However, same with Newlands and Doberaner, Mendeleev's periodic table also has irregularity. Some newly identified elements had properties that did not match those of the groups already included in the periodic table. And they were even elements that had to be placed in the table as a new group. Thus, Mendeleev's periodic table needs to be modified. And this was done by Henry Mosley who created the modern periodic table. He arranged the elements according to increasing atomic number and not atomic mass. He discovered that the positive charge or proton in the nucleus of an atom of any element is of a definite amount. The differences in Mendeleev's periodic table and the modern periodic table are summarized as follows. First, Mendeleev's periodic table was arranged in order of increasing atomic mass, while modern periodic table is arranged in order of increasing atomic number. Second, in Mendeleev's table, the noble gases are not included, but in the modern periodic table, they are. And last, there are gaps in Mendeleev's periodic table, but there are none in the modern periodic table as they have been discovered. As of today, the modern periodic table of elements that we use is organized on the basis of the following. According to increasing atomic number, which is equivalent to the number of proton, electronic configuration, which is the way the electrons of an atom are distributed in the various energy levels or electron shells, and recurring chemical properties. Aside from that, the elements in the periodic table are arranged in rows and columns. Groups or families are the vertical columns that contain elements with similar properties. While period are the horizontal rows in the periodic table. Now in connection with this, you have to answer activity number 2 entitled Locating Elements. Using the modern periodic table of elements, you have to determine the location of the element in the modern periodic table by its group and period. You also have to answer activity number 3 entitled Metallic and Non-Metallic Properties. You have to read each statement whether the properties is for metal or non-metal by checking the column of the correct term. So this arrangement 
of elements allows us to study systematically the way properties vary with the elements position in the table. Similarities and differences among the elements are easier to understand and remember. We can also use the periodic table to identify the known elements as metals, non-metals, and semi-metals or metalloids. So the majority of the elements on the left side of the table are metals. The non-metals are confined on the right side of the table. And a stair-step line separates metal and non-metal. The elements along the stair-step line are called semi-metals. Semi-metals or metalloids have the appearance and some properties of a metal but behave like a non-metal in certain instances. There are seven semi-metals in total, and this includes boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium. With respect to position in the periodic table of the representative elements, you have to remember that metallic character increases from top to bottom and decreases from left to right while non-metallic character decreases from top to bottom and increases from left to right, as seen in the figure below. Metallic property relates to how easy it is for an atom to lose an electron. On the other hand, non-metallic property relates to how easy it is for an atom to gain an electron. So you can now answer activity number 4 entitled Metallic and Non-Metallic Periodic Trends. Using the location of the given elements in the periodic table, you have to answer the following questions by circling the correct answer. And for evaluation, knowing that metals corrode with acids or even with water in the air, you have to illustrate or show through pictures ways on how to prevent corrosion of metals like metal roof and fence. Here is the rubrics for scoring. Now to sum things up, periodic table of elements shows the arrangement of the element organized on the basis of their atomic number, electronic configuration, and recurring chemical properties. The elements in the periodic table are arranged in rows and columns. Groups or families are the vertical columns that contain elements with similar properties while periods are the horizontal rows in the periodic table. Periodic table can also be used to identify the known elements as metal, non-metals, and metalloids by simply identifying the location and the periodic 